York's Classic Rock, Q1043. All right, welcome back, everybody. Jonathan Clark in the studio with our good friend Mike Peters from The Alarm. How are you, man? Great, Jonathan. Great to be here in the Big Apple. The man in the camo jacket, which <laughs> is a very important thing we're going to get to shortly, and your lovely wife, Jules. Uh, Jules, how are Morning, you? Morning, Jonathan. Lovely to be here. Uh, great to have you both here. Uh, the new documentary, Getting Back to That Camouflage Jacket that you are wearing, it's called Man in the Camo Jacket, and the soundtrack of the same name, of course, all the info at maninthecamojacket.com. The alarm is on the Vans Warped Tour, yeah, which is like insane. How many how many shows is that? That's like 40-something? Yeah. Th- yeah. Well, we're, we're actually doing 13 of the Vans shows, but we're okay. doing 30 headline shows as well, or 33, I think. It's, right. It's just been so much interest out there, and uh, the train keeps rolling down the track. The Vans Warped Tour is coming to Jones Beach this Saturday, July 8th, also the PNC July 15th, and then the Alarm proper, just by yourselves, headlining at the Gramercy Theater July 22nd, right? Yeah, that's going to be an amazing show. Great theater. Can't wait to go back there. And Fantastic. all the tour dates uh, at thealarm.com. All right, so I saw you two last week yeah. on the Joshua Tree, and, and I'm going to get to why I'm, I'm telling you this <laughs> shortly. But So I saw you two at MetLife Stadium last week, and I was talking with their manager, and uh, you know we we're talking about well, when was the first time I saw you two. So I, I said I think it was in you know Colorado back in the '80s. And uh, so of course I you know everyone has like the history of all their tours <laughs> now available yeah. on site. So the date was August. I forget what it was, and it was Red Rocks, Colorado, yeah. and it was August of 1983. Uh, the Divinals. Oh yeah. The Alarm and you too. Were you now, at that show then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to. The, I was going to school in Boulder. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Well, that's that was the, the night after Red Rocks, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, so the, the weird thing about that was the radio station, which is actually part of the iHeart Radio system now, KBCO in Boulder was playing you guys more than they were playing you too because <laughs> yeah. that was my station and yeah, you know, right. hard to, okay, you know yeah. but yeah, just crazy ama- stuff amazing, yeah. and the divinals you know I touch myself yeah. you know that whole <laughs> thing um, so they were really banging the alarm and the divinals not so much you too so I went to the concert to see you <laughs> and the divinals and then it was you too a band who I had never seen before wow, wow. or even heard on yeah, the radio right. yet yeah it was it was amazing and it was all because it? of you <laughs> Sorry to you me. know what i mean <laughs> there you go Jonathan. do you yeah. remember do you remember well, that I, tour i do i remember that that concert in boulder because it was actually the night after their famous red rocks concert sunday when, bloody sunday yeah, they shot the video that's so i right. went to both i went okay. to red rocks and then the next well, night i saw you yeah cuz we never got to play the red rocks cuz they actually canceled that show on on and they put the message out on the air but so many people came that you two went out to play one song and then they arranged the free concert the next night in Boulder. Right. And so they went on stage to do one song and I was stood on the stage waiting with to go on stage because Bonner said, we're going to do one song, get a bit of outdoor footage and then you come on and we're going to do Hard Rain's Going to Fall Together in the Rain. And oh. they get fantastic. But they went on stage and it was if a miracle happened. The weather subsided while they were playing the opening song and Paul McGuinness, their manager then yeah. at the time, was going, keep going, keep going and urged them on to do the whole set. And I stood for the whole of the night waiting to go on and play. Yeah, and, yeah. And they came off to go back on and do an encore and I said, here we go. And then Paul goes, not tonight, my history is oh, being made. Yeah. But if you watch the the dvd back of it now you'll see that when they play 40 at the end of the set well um the edge is playing my guitar is he really because it was set up for me was to it come a strat? on and play what it was, was it? a it was an epiphone rivoli bass oh, okay. at the time but he was playing my and because they switched to 40 and adam played electric guitar oh my and god and edge played bass we played my guitar and then so the next night we came we played at boulder and uh, you two got us all up on stage to do Hard Drain's Gonna Fall, and we did it in the, I don't know if you remember that, but we came on with you two at the end of the night and did oh my God. Hard Drain's, and we murdered it. Well, so so, Bono fired wait, us all. <laughs> was uh, was uh, Elvis Costello on that show? No, no, no. no, no it was the Divinals, the Alarm, yeah, and you two. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, Mike Peters from The Alarm uh, with us. The new documentary is Man in the Camo Jacket. And I got to say, you made me cry. <laughs> I, I, I was telling Jules here yeah. earlier that you made me, I was watching that. I oh. definitely shed a few tears. It's an unbelievable story. Um, it's funny because I was reading like the background on the whole film. The director of the film 
saw the alarm in 1983 he too. Did, yes, that's and right, yeah. here we are, how many years later? And here he is, sort of like directing this film. I know. That's it. That, I think that's made me feel comfortable with Russ that he could tell the story with um, care to the subject matter. He was a fan. And he, he wasn't trying to dig the dirt on the band. He just wanted to tell it as he saw the story. Yeah. And I thought that's uh, that was a great starting point. And uh, Russ came to shoot um, a program for American TV called The Song That Changed My Life. And that's how he got to see the background of Love, Hope, Strength and everything we had going yeah. on in Wales. And thought, Mike, this is... I've, I've got to tell this in a long form style. And, yeah. And, so we and, and it's been 10 years in the making, right? Pretty yeah, much. Well, uh, I think in a way I say it's, it started being made right from 1978 because, right. uh, you know, there's footage in of uh, the 17. There. That's right. And, yeah. and that was only really because the, the accessibility to video cameras was there. And uh, that footage of 17 was shot at Dingwalls in London. And oh they said, God. oh, you, you can have the video if you want for 20 pounds. So I went, yes, Hello. please. Yeah. And it sat in our locker for a long time and and then in 84 85 i actually bought the first real video camera that recorded sound yeah in the past had been the eight mil cameras that but they were just silent films weren't they but all of a sudden you could have a camera in your hand on, right yeah. on your, in your suitcase right take it on the road so i filmed everything from that point on and i suppose good for you for I doing think when, that when russ saw all the footage i had in my archive <laughs> was going, this is a gold mine for alarm fans yeah so, well, yeah. and, the, and the film starts off as sort of, you know, it's almost sort of like a behind the music situation of the yeah. alarm and the ups and downs. You That's know, you, right. you become, you know, you, you struggle, you, everyone's slamming the door in your face and you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, which, you know, goes to the theme of love, hope, strength and um, and, and your subsequent battles um, with the guys in the band and yeah. everything. And you break up and then there's a new version of the alarm, but also the battles with two kinds of cancer. Uh, first, it was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, right? Yeah. Which you, I, I'm assuming you beat that, but literally, like, I don't know how long, how much time went by you were diagnosed with leukemia. Yeah, it was, it was almost a 10-year gap to a the day. A 10-year gap, okay, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, when I was diagnosed with lymphoma, it, it was right on the eve of coming to the USA to play an American tour, and that's where the camo jacket came into play. Right. Um, I was... Uh, uh, I'd been put in touch by uh, uh, U2's old agent, Ian Wilson, who was the alarms manager as well. He said, when he found out I was diagnosed with um, cancer, he said to me, look, Mike, nobody knows this, but I've when I have friends in trouble, I put them in touch with a faith healer. Will you speak to her? And I said, yeah, I'll try anything. Ian. Uh, yeah, just give me the number. And, yeah. Yeah. And I spoke to her and she kept saying green is a powerful color for me. And then Ian was a big John Lennon fan and, and he, he, he sent me a, a biography of Lennon to read on the plane and also accompanied with, with a book about self-healing and I read a book about a pa chapter about a girl who had a tumor and she created a Pac-Man great game in her mind and it et the tumor away and went to spontaneous remission and I thought I need a defense me mechanism like that and I thought of John Lennon he when he was a uh, in those protest songs working he, class he had, hero yeah, and he yeah. had the green jacket and I thought I'm and I the Faith Healer Bambi had said green, so I put two and two together, came up with the psychological combat zone, bought my combat jacket in Hartford, Connecticut, and I went to ah, war okay. on, and I said to Jules, this isn't coming off till I'm cured, so, uh, right. and uh, so it became the, it was a, a way of really focusing my mind, because nobody knew I was ill at that time, because I had gone against all the medical advice to have a tr bone marrow transplant, carried on with the tour, you know, the show must go on, that mentality right. was a big part of it. And uh, so I came to America, and nobody knew. And I was, and then songs like "Strength" that was come from 1985. I started to, that take on a new meaning with Absolutely, the lyrics. Absolutely, yeah. And so, uh, and here I am, still, still alive. And so, and now, I but you before. still, you go, you get treatment occasionally. You're on maintenance. Like, what, yeah. what, what's the status of that now? Yeah, I, I'm. I look. I, I've always say, uh, I. It's like I've been riding it a bad wave, a surfer on the wave, and I've it's never been able to bring me down and I've never fallen into the water. I've always just stayed ahead of the curve. And uh, so I've been the recipient of all kinds of treatments. I started off with the traditional treatments in in, nine, in yeah. 2005, the, the chemos that knock you for six and make you feel ill and sp sick and everything and that but it's moved on so much and i've been the benefit of all those advances so now i take oral chemotherapy i carry it with me on the road i take it in the morning in the evening and it, if i didn't have to read the label that said cancer on it i w almost wouldn't think i had cancer right now yeah, but yeah. i know i have it's in the background it's always going to be there but i can live a normal life and that's an amazing that's why we share this story with the public because so, if you 
happened to get cancer in this day and age. Everyone's got a fighting chance now. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there was an interesting point in the film where, because um, you're you're always doing something. You and Jules, <laughs> the boys, you're, I don't know, your miles on your frequent flyer <laughs> must be insane, but you're always touring, you're always doing something. Um, and, it, and at one point in the film, somebody says, I think, you know, those guys keep so busy so the cancer doesn't catch them. Yeah, there's, there's an element of that, I think, you yeah. know, that you do your life. You don't want to let anything go. You want to make the most of every opportunity. Right. Uh, and and it, I mean, it goes back to, it always comes back to the music. There's a line in Rain in the Summertime. It, I wish I could run fast enough, leave all the pain and the sadness behind. It's, yeah. It's always been there in, in, uh, in the music, beyond the headlines of the music. You go deeper into the lyrics. The, these are the things that always kept pushing me forward, kept I wanting mean, me to stay alive. You two guys are like cats with nine lives. Jules had her, had her own issue with a situation as well. That's right. And, yeah. uh, you know, if that wasn't enough, you know, boom, here comes another, you know, obstacle you got to get out of the way of, you it, know? It's an incredible thing. You know, I sometimes think cancer's got it in for us because we've fought back so hard against it. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's targeted both. You know, Jules was diagnosed with breast cancer last year and come through an incredible year. Really, we've been able to survive together. So it's uh, you ne you never it's never safe to, to be go a, back a, in the water. There has to be a second documentary. I made think there will. Yeah, I think, you know what I mean. Woman in the camo jacket. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's funny. I actually worked at IRS Records. Oh, did literally you? Literally for what? You remember Steve Karras? I don't yes, know if you remember the, him. Of course, so Steve, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Steve uh, got me the job there. This Fantastic. was back in the nineties. <laughs> I was I was not there when the alarm were like blowing. You know, yeah, that's right, blowing yeah. things up. But uh, shortly thereafter. Um, well, you're wearing a still fiercely independent T-shirt. Yes, and that, exactly. That was what was uh, great about a label like IRS. It was it was fiercely independent, and as and that's that ran off into the band. You know, we were we were never the arms never been a band that's been on those kind of major sort of corporation international labels. record no, we've syndicate. Always been off the grid. Yeah, in the underground. Well, you were with some great bands on IRS. I mean, oh, geez, yeah. REM. Oh, you had the right, Go Go's, yeah. the Bangles. You know, English Beat. There English some Beach. Great bands. You know, speaking of uh, you know Miles Copeland and Dave Wakeling. You see uh, them all in the film. These guys are in the film. <laughs> Uh, who else? Uh, Duff McKagan, Slim Jim from the Stray Cats, Cy Kernan from the Fix, Billy Glenn Duffy. Tilbrook from yeah. Squeeze. Billy I mean, Duffy it goes from the Cult. Yeah. Billy Duffy from the Cult. Billy Corrigan. Yeah. Now, see that that shocked me that Billy Corrigan from the Smashing Pumpkins was in your documentary. So he's obviously a fan of you and the Alarm and everything yeah. you're doing. I I met Billy. He came to a gig uh, in Chicago, and like he said, it was a small gig uh i was in the elbow room it was called in in chicago and and he came to see me play and i was blown away you know that someone like billy from the smashing pumpkins was coming to see the alarm and he was more excited than i was because he was beating me and and he, he was a big fan he you know grown up seeing the alarm doing the stand on mtv and uh yeah, it was really uh he was a great and i think he was uh the, you start to find the thing, you come from a different generation of music, but you find the things in common. And that had to do with being independent, staying in control of your music. And, and they're the tensions that break bands up. You know, the Alarm and the Pumpkins broke up, got back together again, right. as we all do in our lives. And uh, and I think we, we were able to just sort of connect on on, on some of the things that, that drive us forward to, to keep making the music we always uh, believe in. It's uh, Mike Peters from The Alarm, along with his uh, lovely wife, Jules, in the studio with us. The new documentary, Man in the Camo Jacket, the soundtrack of the same name and all the info at maninthecamojacket.com. The Alarm is on the Vans Warp Tour, Jones Beach, this Saturday, July 8th, PNC, July 15th, and July 22nd. The Alarm headlining a show at the Gramercy Theater here in New York City. All the tour dates at thealarm.com. Um how do you see? How do people see the film now? What? Where do they go? Do they download it? Is it iTunes? Like where? Yeah, where can in, they... the, in the USA, it's uh, it's available on iTunes. Uh, it's a video on demand release, and right. it, and it's uh, you know it's, it's got onto the front pages of iTunes, which is amazing, and uh, it's picking up some great reviews. It was L.A. Times Pick of the Week, so oh man, it's, uh, yeah, it's shaking things up a little bit, and uh, and and you can also you know we're on the road, but not just as a band, you know, because we the Love Hope Strength Charity, we're out there on Van. Warp Tour, Swabbing Cheeks, Saving Lives, and we work with all Let's kinds of bands. Let's talk about that, uh, but first, you brought this beautiful guitar oh, yeah. that says, Peace Now, No Guitars in the War Machine. Yeah, that's what we need. And I want to talk about <laughs> the House of Parliament. 
uh, and your friends over there. But uh, how about uh, giving us a song? Well, let's let's you know while we're on subject on point here, let's let's play strength because this is really the song that that founded the charity and uh, the song that has kept me alive and helped save lives on its journey since it was written in 1985. It's called Strength. Light the fire I need to survive Who will be the lifeblood Coursing through my veins Like a river flowing That will never change I need someone I can depend I'm a man of emotion, I can't hide the tears I'm a man of feeling, I can't hide the pain I'm alone on the outskirts of town, no one knows my name I'm at the point in my life where I need a faith Won't you give me love, give me hope, give me strength, someone to live for. Give me love, give me hope, give me strength, give me someone. Someone write me a letter I need to know that I'm still alive Someone give me a telephone call I need to hear a human sound Someone open the door And let me out of this place I've been cased up for oh so long I don't know if I'm living or dying Someone better give me love, give me hope, give me strength, someone to live for. Give me love, give me hope, give me strength, someone. Yeah, Mike Peters from The Alarm playing live here on Q104, <laughs> Three's Out of the Box. Really nice. The harmonica and everything's fantastic. Uh, Mike is here, but he's got a new documentary called Man in the Camo Jacket. You can just look at his jacket uh, if you forget the title of the film. Uh, the soundtrack of the same name, of course, all the info at the manandthecamojacket.com. And The Alarm is on the Vans Warp Tour coming to Jones Beach this Saturday, July 8th, the PNC July 15th. And the headlining show uh, with The Alarm at the Gramercy Theater in New York City, July 22nd. All the tour dates, thealarm.com. Um, let's get to uh, the Love, Hope, Strength organization. Um, and tell me about Mount Everest. And do you hold a world record for the <laughs> concert held at the highest place I, on you, earth? Go yeah. ahead, tell me. <laughs> yeah, well, we went to Everest 2007. Um, that was really <clears throat> the beginning of Love, Hope, Strength Foundation. And our mission to uh, give people who are less fortunate ourselves in the, the countries we live who have access to great medicine, great medical teams, great facilities, people less fortunate than, than us. We try to um, t 
take some of our, our initiatives down there, raise some funds and, and support the cancer centres in, in places not as fortunate as us. So we, we went to Everest. And uh, we being? Uh, Glenn Tilbrook from Squeeze, Slim Jim Phantom from the Stray Cats, uh, uh, Cy Kernan from The Fix, and, and we decided to go and play the world's highest concert. Okay, I saw the film. Glenn had a little <laughs> trouble walking <laughs> he up. He did, the, you know, yeah. I mean... <laughs> yeah, I mean, Glenn was amazing. We, we he's the great. I mean, he's he comes brilliant. here all the time. Oh, yeah. He's fantastic. And he, uh, Glenn was uh, was struggling to get to the peak. Kalapatar we were going to. We knew if we got to the summit of that, we could do the highest concert yeah. in the world. And he was so ill on, on the ascent. And he was stopping every few feet to be Well, you get sick. altitude sickness oh, did, up yeah. there. Yeah, yeah well, he took a bottle of whiskey with him as well. I don't think that helped either. Glenn, you're kidding me. <laughs> I am shocked to hear that. Shocked and shocked, stunned. Shocked. But, uh, but went, as soon as he got a guitar in his hand, he was like doing the it, Chuck Berry duck walk. He was 16 all over the again. highest ever duck, duck walk in history. And it's not only Everest, it's also other mountains you've climbed yeah, we've, too, right? Yeah, we've been to Kilimanjaro. We just, uh, Jules and I just did the concert on the highest mountain in Wales and England, and we raised uh, £350,000 for cancer services in North Wales. And, and we try to, whenever we climb a mountain, we benefit what's in the shadows of the mountain. So in Africa, when we climbed Kilimanjaro, we built uh, helped build a cancer centre in Dar es Salaam, and same with, with uh, in Nepal, we built uh, onto the uh, Back to Poor Cancer Centre. What's the Kathmandu. website so people can go to right uh, now? Lovehopestrength.org here okay. in the USA. And yeah. then um, there's the other one, uh, Get on the List. Get on the List. That's our program where we uh, we we work with bands across the USA and the UK, and we go out on their tours. You know, Flogging Molly, for instance, or yeah. Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin, and, and we'll swab cheeks at their gigs get people who are aged between 18 and 55 onto the Bomar Donor Registry through our partners DKMS, who are based here in New York. And the, and through those, uh, the Get On The List campaign, we, we match people to give people who need a transplant, people with leukemia, a second chance at life. And then the artists get the credit. We've done a lot with Linkin Park, for instance. Oh, wow. And right. we've Chester? Saved, or yeah, like, they're yeah. big supporters of what we do. And uh, we've, we've swapped on all their gigs. And we've saved over 40 lives by being at, at uh, Linkin Park concerts. So they've Yeah, there are a few people go to those concerts. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and in, in the film, you're actually... Uh, you went into the the Parliament House in London, House of Parliament, and then yeah. the House of Parliament, and then uh, actually one p member of Parliament became a, a donor. Or That's something? right. Yeah. Like, well, we we because um, of the way we're integrated with DKMS, we were able to go into the House of Commons in in the UK and uh, do a cheek swab donor drive. It, when you come to a get on the list booth on a concert or a festival like we are at Warp Tour this summer. Um, it's a cheek swab. It takes a few minutes, takes some information to follow you through life if you get matched. Right. So we were holding the first ever donor drive like that in the UK. And uh, an MP for Wiltshire came along, thought a great chance to get a, a twit pick, you know, to share right, this, yeah, with exactly. his He's uh, probably an alarmed fan, you yeah. know, yeah. He did. Re and then two months later, he gets matched with someone. And then next minute you see him in the hospital giving his blood to say it. Because that's all it is in this day and age. You're really just giving your blood. Uh, uh, to to save someone else's life, so it's a beautiful thing to be able to do. Uh, so it's uh, Mike Peters, The Alarm, the new documentary, Man in the Camo Jacket. So what is the website for Get on the List? That's it is Love Hope Strength. Oh, it is. So it's all right there, yeah, and you can click the buttons on there, and it'll take you through to uh, get. A, you, we can do a, a mail shot if you are interested in saving a life. Who listening to the show tonight? Uh, today uh, on on air and everything you can actually go and, and uh get th through lovehopestrength.org you can s sign up there oh, and then oh, okay, and we'll send you a, a swab pack in in the mailing list and you can cheek swab yourself and send it back to us and we'll put you on the list and you can become a life-saving person and everybody needs to watch this film and you can watch men in the camo jacket uh, just uh, you download it, you can do it on itunes itunes you can do... yeah i mean it's good you know it's a, a long form release coming later in the year it will be dvd, DVD and blu-ray right, yeah, and, and blu it'll have an international re release around when we when we're going to be on foreign short well back at home in europe and we'll be touring then so i think that's uh, how we try to do it is it not just put it all out in one day it's try so we can keep the message alive and get to as many people as we can we kind of spread it out i just remember what i want to ask you you did you recorded the longest song <laughs> That's another one yeah. in the history do you, yeah. how many guinness world records do you well hold? we, you... we have held two but not for very long we got beaten every time you know about a few weeks about a couple of months later we did everest and we were the highest band to have played right. uh in the world we got beaten by a german group we did something in the andes about oh. three weeks later so wait you went to abbey road yeah, yeah we did uh we want to record uh we were actually going to go and do a, um, an event in, in Israel, hiking the Gospel Trail, but then the uh, the conflict 
broke up there and uh so yeah. it, it made it a bit scary for people to go so but we still wanted to show our support for the for the bone marrow donor registry that was happening down there because it was a great initiative saving people on all sides of the conflict bringing pe b really building bridges of peace there and uh, so we decided to create the world's longest ever recorded song which we cut at abbey road and and i cut how it how long was it uh, 97 minutes long, I think it was. So a little prog rock? Uh, yeah, a little prog rock, yeah. <laughs> Went through lots of different arrangements. But we yeah. had members of the public writing lyrics, playing guitar, doing drums, and they some came to Abbey Road and held sessions in LA, New York. Some of them were backstage at gigs, and I had a studio set up in the dressing oh, room, and fans were coming in singing a line. It was great fun. And uh, I le as a, an individual, I learned a lot from seeing how all people approach their music from all walks of life. And right, yeah. We were able to bring them together as a, it was called the scriptures and it was a, a massively long project mike thank you so much <laughs> thank you uh, and jules thank you great to see you we got the boys out there somewhere yeah. uh so best of luck with this film and the soundtrack i want to play uh i guess we're going to play the stand off the soundtrack yeah, to the man in the camo it, yeah. jacket. Um, so is this a different version of the song? It, it's pl it's played by the modern version of the band. Uh, it's, okay. It was recorded in, in recent times. And uh, and it's, uh, you know, because things come full circle. And, and I think we're we're living in an era now for the alarm. It's, it's as exciting as it's ever been. You know, we've got great music coming out there. We've got a massive American tour going back to Britain. We've just played our biggest gigs in decades, it's it's amazing, and, and you still have the gathering. We still too. have the gathering. We ha we will be coming um, back to New York next year as right. well. So it, it you know, and we really can't wait to play the Gramercy on the twenty second of July. It's going to be an amazing show. Yeah, I yeah. love that theatre, and everyone's right up there right. in your face, and we're we're ready to blow New York to pieces. Awesome, we've rock and roll. Thank you so much, <laughs> Thanks, Jules. Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, we will. Thank you. Yeah! New York's Classic Rock, Q1043.